Good evening, First Baptist Church, and to all of our members and our friends and family members uh, near and far. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us uh, in another Bible study night. We hope that something will be said and done uh, to chill your hearts along the way, to raise your consciousness, and to draw you even closer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, we want to thank you. Uh, we are in the throes of a new lesson, and this is our third week, and we are talking about uh, being refined by God, being refined by God. And I hope, uh, since we embarked upon this lesson, that you are able to look around and you're able to see what God is doing uh, in this land and around the world and even in our personal and collective lives. Because if we stick with what God is doing, I promise you, uh, the end result will be that we will be more like Christ rather than more like our own selves. Let us pray. Father God, we come tonight to thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Father, for watching over us, protecting us, and providing for us. And we also pray, Father, that you forgive us for anything that we may have said, done, or thought, Lord, that exalted itself above the obedience of Christ. Help us to cast down imaginations. Help us, Father, to resist anything that is not of you, Lord, so that you can continue to mature us, so that you can continue to lift us up. And Lord, let that light shine within us so that, Lord, that others can see our good work and they too want to glorify the Father which is in heaven. Father, we are praying that you would bless each and every person under the sound of my weak voice. We're praying, Lord, for all of the sick among us. We're praying for all of the bereaved among us. And Father, we just got a news report that Brother Nat Brown is home and Lord, that his, his surgery was successful. And we just want to thank you, Father, that you have heard our prayers and you are yet making good on your promise to us. We ask, Father, that as we go forth, that you bless us and Lord, that you give us that wisdom and raise our level of understanding, Lord, so that we can be on the same page with what you're doing in and through us, that we will be more like your son, Jesus Christ. These and all blessings we ask in our son, Jesus' name, and the people of God said, amen, amen. Oh, I'll grow back 
beautiful selection. Lord, remind me. Lord, remind me. We want to thank you for that uh, selection because we do need to be reminded uh, of where we are and how good God has been to us and how far God has brought us. Again, we want to thank Sister Walker for that very beautiful and spiritual selection. We want to continue our subject tonight uh, on, on the topic of uh, refined by God refined by God. And as we said before, that God's refinement uh, is different from anything else uh, that we might go through. Uh, it's not the refinement intellectually, it's not the refinement uh, that maybe a college or university or seminary uh, may give us. It's a refinement to help us in the process of becoming more like Christ. And when we become more like Christ, then we can make an impact uh, for the kingdom of God. Our introduction says in order for us to become like Christ, we have to go through a refining process. And oftentimes this process is not pretty, it is not welcomed, it is not desired, but it is necessary to get rid of those sins and those attitudes and behaviors that make us unlike the person of Jesus Christ. God sees us not as hopeless humans, but full of potential. God is the refiner, and we are the lump of unrefined gold, full of impurity and full of potential beauty. Mike Gork said, gold when extracted from the earth does not look like gold we find in a jewelry store. In fact, it is not always recognizable due to the impurities that mar its appearance, yet, for the person searching for it, the ugliest lump of gold is of great value and the potential for beauty is evident. We, as men and women, are similar to those lumps of unrefined gold. God takes us through the refining process of struggle, toil, pain, sorrow, and agony. That which is insignificant, unimportant, and worldly in our lives melts away like dross, and I put in parentheses, dross just simply means impurities, to make us shine like the brightness of Jesus Christ. This process creates opportunities for God to do something transformational in our lives. Refining prepares, it purges, purifies, and thus blesses us to become pure gold. Blessed are those who endure the refining. Again, I want to say that refining process is not pretty, it's not welcomed, and it's not desired, but it is necessary to get rid of those things in our lives that are unlike Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we have been uh, going over the fact that when we go through these uh, processes that God uses uh, in order to purge us, in order to prepare us, uh, in order to propel us, uh, in order to purify us. It is something uh, that is necessary for us to live out our purpose on this earth. And we have to understand that as moral as a person can be, but even with a person like Job that even God bragged on, he said, there's none other like him. Uh, 
uh, uh, very rarely do we hear God talking about a human like he talked about Job. None other like him. But yet Job went through a process of refining, uh, a process of, 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 of going through something he did not understand. He did not welcome it. It was not pretty. But yet he learned something in the process. And what he learned in the process was to keep his mouth closed about what he just does not understand because as much as he tried to understand and as much as he tried to live a moral and pleasing life to God, he found out some things about himself and about God that he had to put his hand on his mouth to be quiet because there were some things he just did not understand. And yet we find out that when Job understood what God was taking him through, whether he understood it in his full uh, capacity, but Job says, when he finishes with me, for whatever reason, when he finishes with me, then I shall come forth as pure gold. I will have all of the dross, I will have all of the misconceptions and all of the opinions that I have held of myself and I have held of God and maybe other things and even of my friends and people that, that, that I was close to, when God purges me from all of those things that I, I have held uh, that may not be true, but when he has carried me through that and that, and that, that dross has, has, has come to the top uh, while he is refining me, when that is removed, regardless of how many times he takes me through this process, when he finishes, then I shall come forth as pure gold. And the, and the gold in life, not the G-O-L-D, but the G-O-A-L, uh, the goal is for us to become more like Jesus Christ, something of great value in the earth. Let's move on now with our scriptures so that we can continue to uh, understand uh, this uh, topic. And we're going to have this uh, first scripture for the night read by Sister Hazel Doswell, uh, Daniel, the 12th chapter in the 10th verse. Good evening, everyone. I'll be reading Daniel 12, verse 10. Many shall be purified, made white and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Amen. Thank you, Sister Doswell, for reading uh, the scripture for us. Many what? shall be purified. That's talking about you and I, and I hope that you and I are in the many. Many shall be purified because we ought to want to be pleasing to God. God sees something in us, all right? But a lot of times we have all of that dross. We have all of the, 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 the cake uh, and layers of impurities over us that even sometimes we wonder, do we have any value? But God, who is the searcher, God who is the purifier, he sees that value in us. So therefore he has to take us through that purifying process in order that we may be what? Made white. Now let me, let me say made white does not mean become Caucasian. I wanna make sure you understand that. That's not what he's talking about here. Made white simply mean is to become clean, uh, is to be refined. Made white is not talking about skin color. It is not talking about ethnicity. It is not talking about what we think in color codes. This is made white means the sin, the impurities, all of the things that can, can mar us, mar our appearance. Those things will be washed away. Those things will be taken from us uh, so that we can be what? We can be refined so that we can come forth looking like the value that God made, okay? So I wanna make sure that people understand that because uh, we have so many people. Uh, when I was going through seminary, we call some of these people eisegesis when they ought to be exegeting. So it's a whole lot of eisegeting going on. Eisegeting simply means when you superimpose uh, on the text what you think it is saying, all right? 
Uh, eisegesing is when you legitimate and justify certain actions uh, in the earth, like slavery and oppression and white supremacy and, and all of those things, or, or is when you use scripture to try to uh, uh, dethrone women or make women feel less than. See, we got a lot of those uh, 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 people in the pulpit who do a lot of eisegeting when they should be trained to do exegeting, exegete the text the way it is written and make sure you understand the background information, but don't just arbitrarily just take it and eisegete it, all right, to make it say what you want it to say. So I just wanted to make that clear that we're not talking about skin color here. So many shall be purified, made white, made clean, all right, and refined, all right? In other words, being refined, moving the dross, moving the impurities, the character, uh, the disposition, the sins, uh, those things that, that, that mar us and mar our appearance, that covers up our value to the point that we don't and nobody else may see our value, but God sees through all of that. So therefore he has to carry us through that process in order to remove those things in order that what? That our light will shine even brighter, even on some car lights after a while, uh, the, 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 the headlights might get a little dull. Now they got some stuff now that you can put on your headlights uh, because the light uh, 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 is not as illuminating as it should. It's not that the light is not burning, but a lot of stuff has gotten on, 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 on in front of the light. And so you have to clean off the light bulb. You have to clean off the covering in order for the light to shine through even brighter so that you can see better at night. Similar to what this purifying process is. We got so much that's covering us, so many things that are in our way that God has to take us through the refining process in order to remove uh, those things that are prohibiting the light, in, the light of Christ in us to illuminate even brighter. So he's saying that if many shall be purified, didn't say all, because all, uh, will not cooperate. All uh, will not yield and surrender. But he said many, and I hope that you and I are in the many. Many shall be purified, made white, and refined. But the wicked, now here's, the, here's a, a distinction, but the wicked shall do wickedly. In other words, because they don't want to cooperate, because they don't want to surrender and go through the refining process, they're going to continue to do what they've always done. So the wicked going to continue to do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. So this is the purpose of Bible study, to make us spiritually wise, so that as we go through this process, as we go through this purifying uh, process, as we go through the refining process, we'll understand that God is working on us. And when we understand that God is working on us, then that ought to uh, cause us uh, to, to surrender even more. Because at the end of that process, at the end of our trials, at the end of our tests, uh, something far more valuable will come forth than, 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 than was there before. So I want us to understand that why is it that these people uh, the wicked people. Why is it? Because they don't want to be purified. They don't want to have anything to do with God. They don't want to have anything to do with the church. They don't want to have anything to do uh, with religion. And we're not talking about religion. We're not talking about the church. We are talking about going through a refining process uh, of which the Holy Spirit is involved. As I said, uh, last two weeks, God put us in that crucible. And putting us in that crucible uh, uh, the circumstances, the heat, uh, all of the things in life, he sometimes has to turn that up so that the dross uh, uh, will float to the top. And as the purifier, he can remove the dross, remove the impurities, so that what? So that we can come out like fine gold, fine silver, so that our light will illuminate even brighter. And the brighter we are, the more the light will reach others in the world. So I want us to understand that the wicked won't do it. They're going to continue to do what they've always done. No matter how much you try to preach and teach, 
Uh, and we know this last tragedy that has happened in Buffalo, New York. Uh, this young man has read the great replacement, uh, this foolish document uh, that he has read that he has to do something uh, in order to stop that trend. See, that's, that's wickedness. And that's put up there to call somebody uh, to go and try to what? To purify a race of people or try to wipe them out. We call it ethnic cleansing. So you got documents up there on the internet that people read and they really believe that they got to do something about that. So behind all of this uh, is, is wickedness. Behind all of this is a, a, the enemies of our souls are trying to get a young man and other young people radicalized uh, in order to practice what we call ethnic cleansing. But nobody can ethnic cleanse. That is only left up to God. God is not interested in, again, your color. Even though he made us the color we are, but God don't get boxed into our uh, sociological and, and our racial categories. That's not who God is. God is transcendent as well as personal. But when we try to take upon ourselves to do something only that God can do, then that's when we are really becoming wicked because the wicked one, the evil one, will use us to do crazy things as we just witnessed uh, this past week. Let us move on. Now, in our discussion, as we've been talking about this uh, 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 for the past two weeks and the third week tonight, how do you apply these characteristics in your life as listed in the scripture? purified, white, refined. I've already told you about white. White is not synonymous to skin color. It's not uh, an ethnic group. Uh, so how do you, how do you apply these characteristics in your life, being purified? How do you, how are you purified? How do you become uh, 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 clean uh, uh, and refined? All right, you can put it in the chat. And as you're putting that in the chat, then we're going to have someone to read your response. Because again, God is after cleansing, cleaning us up, cleaning our character out so that we can become more like Jesus Christ. That's the goal of the church. That's our collective goal. That should be our individual goal. All right. So how do you apply these characteristics in your life? Listed in the scripture. All right. Somebody read. Applying God's word to our daily lives. Mm -hmm. Yes. The Holy Spirit is my lead. My conscience is oops, popping up too fast now. Um, the Holy Spirit is my lead. My conscience is steadily being refined through the spirit. Mm -hmm. We must pray for forgiveness daily as a part of our cleansing process. I hope and desire to be better today than I was last month or a year, mm -hmm. um, becoming more like him. Yes. Refined, staying in the Bible, studying, and being more like Jesus in our day to day. Yes. Keep keeping the word of God present. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All of these responses are just excellent. I think another one popped up here. Yeah, hang on a second. It popped up real high. Okay. Through prayer, sermons, reading the Bible, and Sunday school, put into practice what you learn. Amen. All excellent responses. This is how we are purified, refined, washed, made clean. Amen. Thank you. Uh, all excellent responses. Let us let us move on. Amen. Now this uh, uh, scripture will be read by Brother uh, Barry Dalswell. He's going to read Malachi the third chapter, uh, two through four. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi and praise them as gold and silver, that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasant to the Lord, 
as in the days of old, as in former years. Amen. Thank you, Brother Doswell. So, so we can see here that, that uh, uh, Malachi, uh, the prophet, is asking the question. If we stay in our uh, 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 state of, of, of disobedience, if we stay in our state of, of unrefinedness, who then can endure the day of his coming? All right. Who can stand when he appears? God is so magnificent. He's so bright. He's so holy. Mm -hmm. Then who can stand? You got to be prepared. Mm -hmm. You got to be prepared to be able to stand before him. You got to be prepared to be able to look upon him. All right. That's one reason why he told Moses, no man sees me and live. Because what? Because man is not in a refined condition to be able to see me. But he did not disappoint Moses. What he told Moses, even though you can't see my face, uh -huh. but what I will do, I will put you in the cleft of the rock. And I, as I'm passing by, I will take my hand off of your face and I will let you see my backside. And so we know that's what happened. Moses would put in the cleft of the rock. And when God passed by, Moses looked up and he saw the backside of God. Ooh. So, so God won't disappoint. So Moses knew that, that, that this God that we serve and worship, that this God that brought us into existence, he has a face, mm. but that face is so magnificent. It is, it is brighter than 10,000 suns. It is, it is more radiant than lightning. I mean, it's, we can't look at, upon it in our present fallen uh, condition. So that's why we have to go through a refining process. That's why we got to take off this body. I tell people all the time, I know we love our loved ones. I know we love our loved ones, our mothers and our fathers and our brothers and sisters and all of the people that we love on earth that we have interacted with. But, but we got to get out of this flesh. We got to get out of it. And we got to get out of it because it is what? It is marred. It is sinful. It is fallen. Okay. So therefore, he has to carry us through this refining process so that we will be prepared. When he comes, we can look upon him, even though the spirit will come out of us when that day comes, when we cross over. But we will not be naked. We will be clothed until the day comes when he will give us those glorified bodies, those refined bodies, those bodies that are able to look upon him, able to interact with him, sinless bodies, pure uh, bodies, uh, 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 you name it, we will be in a prepared state to see him as he is. But as long as we are in these bodies and the spirit is in our bodies, he is refining our spirits on the inside, all right? He, he's refining us on the inside, for he is like a refiner's fire. He's like a lingerer's soap to clean us. See, the body is one thing, but it's the spirit on the inside that what? That animates the body, okay? So if the body is going to do what it needs to do, then the spirit has to be washed. The body just does what's on the inside. So if your spirit is marred, if your spirit is defected, if, your, if there are things in your spirit uh, uh, that, are, that are ungodly, things in your spirit that causes you to be disobedient, God is after washing and refining that spirit. The body only does what the spirit tells it to do, okay? So it's on the inside, the spirit, the soul of us. All right, that soul part, that, that spirit in us has to be refined. Because when you when that spirit gets refined, guess what? It's going to what? Same body, but it's going to have a new walk. It's going to have a new talk. That's why Paul says uh, that we become new creatures. Not that we're going to look any different, but what? The character inside of us, all right? The spirit inside of us causes us to walk different to think differently, to love differently, to do all of the things that we didn't do at first. We'll know a change has become. It didn't start on the outside. 
is what? The change started on the inside. And whatever is on the inside is going to do what? It's going to manifest itself on the outside. So regardless of how good looking you are, how tall you are, how well educated you are, or how small you are, how educated you are, whatever it is, those are external. Those are external features. But God is, as the Bible has said, he desires the inward part. That's what he's cleaning up. Because when he cleans up the inside, it's going to manifest itself on the outside. So he's like a what? A refiner's fire. I want to put emphasis on that fire. Because that fire, what? It purifies. You know, I think I've said to, to you before that I've noticed that when you put steel in fire, if you leave the steel in the fire long enough, then the what? The fire gets into the steel. Let me repeat that. When you put steel in the fire, if you leave the steel in the fire long enough, then the fire gets into the what? It gets into the steel. And when the fire gets into the steel, then you, you can easily shape and, and, and shape that steel in whatever direction you want to shape it. However way you want to shape that steel, it is shapeable because the fire in it is allowing you to bend it uh, like, 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 like you want it to be. So, so it is with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the fire in us. And if we stay in the, in the fire of the Holy Ghost long enough, then that fire gets in us. And then God can what? He can shape that character. He can shape that attitude. He can, he can shape that conduct. He can shape that mouth. He can shape us into the person of Jesus Christ. He's a refiner. So I want to make sure we understand the refiner's fire is the Holy Spirit. Because it says that he sits as a refiner and a purifier of silver. All right. And then it said he will purify the sons of Levi. In other words, the son of Levi, they need some, they need some attitude adjustments. They, they need some, 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 some straightening out of some character defects. Uh, they need things done to them so that they can what? They can be purged as silver and as gold that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. So that begs the question, previously to the, uh, to the purifying process, they must have not offered the Lord a what? A offering in righteousness. There may have been something flawed about it. There may have been something unclean about it. There may have been something missing about it. So God wants us uh, not to miss the mark. He doesn't want anything. That's why he told uh, Moses and the children of Israel, when you make a sacrifice, don't go and get me anything that lame. Get the best. I want you to get the best of your flock and offer it unto me. God does not want our leftovers. And I think we need to understand that. Uh, uh, we give our best to everything else. But when it comes to God, we want, we want to give God the leftover. And so it is with our lives. There are some people that, 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 that are run uh, with the world and do the things of the flesh and do the things of the world. But when they get older and can't give much service, here they come. Uh, uh, they want to come now and offer the Lord the leftovers and they want to be holier than thou and everybody else. But why didn't you come earlier? But, but thank God you did come. Thank God you came. But understand that there are other people out there that need to come in and have some, some love and some mercy and the understanding for them like God has some love and mercy and understanding for us. So we need to understand that, that uh, 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 God is purifying us. He has to purify the church, all right, without a spot and a wrinkle. The, ch the, the, the postmodern church has so many spots on it, has so many wrinkles in it. God got to purify the church, which means that he got to carry us through something. He gonna have to carry us through something to get us back to why he brought us into existence, to get us to get out of the bed with the world to get out of the bed with all of the things that, that God uh, would not allow us to do or we shouldn't be doing as his what? As his children. So again, God is purifying us. So when we're going through any kind of purifying process as we, as we uh, showed you all last week uh, uh, on the video, God is carrying us through that because 
it is necessary. It says, and then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem, just simply talking about his people, will be pleasant to the Lord as in the days of old, as in former years, all right? So God is trying to get us to a point where he gonna have to carry us through the refining process so that he can present his church to himself. Ain't that something? He gonna present the church to himself. He called the church into existence, but because we have done so many things, we have run with the world, we have bowed down to idol gods, we have put materialism before him, we have done all of these things, but yet, yet he says, I got to take you and I got to purify you again so you'll understand your value because God sees the value and a lot of times we don't see the value. We don't even see the value of the church. If we knew the value of the church, because he says, on this rock, I'm going to build my church. He's not talking about a building now. He's not talking about brick and mortar. He's simply talking about his truth. His truth. His truth in the world of lies. His truth in a material world that's going to hell. His truth. And once we build the church and use the church and be part of a church that what? That communicates the truth, that lives the truth, that walk in the truth, then we are what? We are cleansed. Now, you remember... I think it was uh, uh, in, uh, in, the, in the Gospel of John where he says that uh, uh, such were some of you, but now you have been what? You've been washed. You've been washed. And what? Washed by what? Washed by my word. So you got to see it's the word, it's the spirit, and it's the experiences that God takes us through to help us to be a purified people, to be a purified individual, to be a purified church. And shame on the church when the world looks at the church and the world sees a reflection of itself and not a reflection of God. And when the world sees a reflection of itself and not a reflection of God, what is that saying? That is saying that now even the world cannot see our value. God may see it, but we don't see it. Well, God does see it, you know, maybe about it. God does see the value, but the world does not see it. So God says, listen, I can't have you continue to profane my name. But what I'm going to have to do, I got to take the church now. I got to take First Baptist. I got to take all of the people in the body of Christ who, 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 who say they love me. All right. But yet, look how they're fighting among themselves. Look how they're undermining, them, uh, uh, undermining themselves, gossiping among themselves. All of the things that the, that the world sees that's happening in the world. So the world looks at the church and says, I see a reflection of, of myself. I see a reflection of the world. I do not see a reflection of heaven. So therefore, if the world does not see a reflection of something greater like heaven, then why would they come? Why would they say, look, why, why go among these people when I got the same people in the world? And that's the same thing that they, 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 they asked Mahatma Gandhi. It was an opportunity missed by Christians. They asked Mahatma Gandhi, why don't you become a Christian? And here's what Mahatma Gandhi said. Why become a Christian? Because I see Christians acting just like the Hindu. The Hindu people are not doing what the Hindu religion says do, the Christians are not doing what their master Jesus Christ says do. So why should I come and move my what? My religion from one uh, religion of Hindu to Christianity when I see both uh, 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 people on the same side of the same coin. So we lost Gandhi. We lost uh, uh, bringing so many Hindus to, to what? To Jesus Christ by the way we act and by the way we live. So you see, that's why God has to purify us because when someone else is looking at us, then if they see a reflection of what they are looking at, then they're not gonna wanna become that. That was the difference in the Roman empire. And that's why the Roman empire was transformed from a Roman empire into a Christian empire. Why? Because the Roman empire saw something different than themselves. The, 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 the early Christian movement was such a difference in the Roman empire. I mean, it reflected something greater than, than what they saw in themselves that many of the Romans gave up 
what they were doing in order to join the Christian movement. All right. And, 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 and that's what I'm saying today. What are we doing so that the world won't see a reflection of itself, but the world will see that the church is a reflection of the God's kingdom to come. And if they can't see that, that God has to take the church through a refining process to get rid of the dross, to get rid of all of the things that is covering us so that we can see our value and the world can see our value. And then the world can now say, we can go unto them because they offer something better than what we've been getting in the world. All right? And that's the, really the purpose of the church. The purpose of the church is not for us to just say we got religion. The purpose of the church is to be what? Be refined by God's word and spirit. So that when we walk, we walk as children of God and not as children of the devil. So that when we do what we do, they can see a reflection of the kingdom that Christ brought us and not the kingdoms of this world. Again, he is telling us that we're going to have to be refined in order not only to see him, but in order that we might continue to fellowship him with him in the what? In the world to come. Let's move on. Hey. 
celebration with me. got me stirred up. <laughs> amen, amen. That's one of those old songs. When God gets through with me, I shall come forth like pure gold. And that's what we ought to continue to sing. That's what we ought to continue uh, to remember, that God's still working on us. Now, some people, it takes longer than others. Some people, it takes the process two or three times to go through to get them uh, just to be able to say, I'm sorry, you know. And that's, 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 you know, well, I'll put it like that. Uh, God is still working on us. Amen. <laughs> All right. We're going to move on now. And this uh, scripture will be read by Reverend Dr. Alvin Thomas, first uh, Peter one, uh, six through seven. Oh, good evening. Verse six. In this you greatly rejoice. But now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Dr. Alvin Thomas, uh, for reading uh, uh, us this scripture. And this is Peter talking because, uh, again, Peter was also caught up in the early church. In the early church, uh, went through a suffering. It went through trials. It went through tests. And, and Peter, uh, Peter was uh, one of the leaders uh, of the early Christian movement. And, uh, but he too uh, had to be refined. God had to refine him. Jesus had to take him through some situations and circumstances because he was not quite where he needed to be. And that song that we just heard that, uh, please be patient with me, because Peter, boy, Peter was, 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 he, 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 was, he was fickle, um, he was in, impulsive, and he was ready to cut your, cut your ear off. Peter, Peter would come at you, uh, but Jesus had to refine him. Jesus had to teach him because Jesus saw something in him. But when Jesus finished with him, and when not only him, but when he carried those disciples uh, through a process of refining, and when they all gathered in the upper room, you remember when they gathered in that upper room and that Holy Spirit came in like a mighty rushing wind and, 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 and entered all of them and, and lit upon them like, like fires of tongue. And they began to, to speak with, with, with new tongues after that experience. And even though they uh, had to go through a lot, after that experience, they went out into the marketplaces. At first they were hiding. They were hiding behind uh, uh, doors and having services here and there, and prayer meetings uh, in, in clandestine places. But when that Holy Spirit grabbed hold to them, and like we said earlier, when that Holy Spirit got in them and refined them, totally refined them, they left that experience. And they were all out in the marketplaces. They, they, they were thrown in jail. It didn't make no difference. Some of them were ro rolled down mountainsides. Some of them were dipped in hot oil. Whatever the Roman Empire, whatever the world did to them, it did not matter because they had something on the inside. They had a fire on the inside that water couldn't put out. They, they had something on the inside that nobody could touch and they knew it. And so therefore they had that, that courage to, to carry out the commandments of their savior only after the Holy Spirit had come upon them. 
And here's what Peter was telling them. In this, even though you are struggling, even though you are going through trials and tests, in this, you rejoice, you greatly rejoice. Don't just do it a little bit. I want you to greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while, if need be, you have been what? Grieved by various trials. And so Peter is uh, recognizing and he is con confirming, I know you're going through these trials. I know you're going through these tests. I know you're going through some dangerous situation, but you're being refined. Uh, that the, the genuineness of your faith being more precious than gold that perishes. Notice here that your faith is more precious than gold that perishes. In other words, what God has given us, nothing on this earth is more precious, all right, more lasting than the faith that we have in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Everything else on planet earth, it will perish. It's material. Material things will perish. But he's saying that your faith, that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire. God going to test us. You know, I tell people all the time, you know, you can go to seminary, you can go to uh, 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 religion departments and you can get a religion degree. That don't mean uh, uh, that you prepare to lead people. That doesn't mean that God has called you into the gospel ministry. A lot of people run to the ministry for whatever reason. I guess they see the glamour and the glory of it, but you stay there a while, you understand that that, that, that is only temporary. So don't let the glory and the glamour uh, fool you. Because if you're going to be a leader, if you're going to be God's leader, if you're going to lead people uh, out of the kingdom of this world into the kingdom of God, you're going to be tested. And you're going to be tested by fire. And you're going to be tested by folk that who, who say they are children of God. You're going to be tested by folk who are supposed to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only the world going to test you, but folks that's supposed to be on God's side, they're going to put you through a test. Mm. They're going to put you through it. And so I just want you to understand it because uh, 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 you're going to be tested. You can't get around it. You can't go over it. You can't run from it. And I, I, I really, when people who tell me that they ran from the ministry, they didn't want to accept it, I said, yeah, you've been called. But the ones that run into it with the hands all open, I said, mm, I don't know. Like, like you running in, you might just run out the same way. I know I ran from it. I ran from the ministry. I did not want to uh, become a minister. I did not want to become a pastor. I didn't want to be a preacher because of what I saw my father going through, uh, the tests uh, that the people were putting him through. Sometimes they didn't know what they were doing, but putting him through it. That's all. Oh, no, I ain't going to go through that. Mm -mm. But guess what? Uh, uh, here I am and still being tested, still being refined, still going through the process so that I too might come out like pure gold. That he said, now, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, to honor, and the glory at the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So I want you to understand that everything that you and I are going through on this earth, Christ went through it. And if we're going to reign with him, and I think we missed this part, if we're going to reign with Christ, then we're going to have to suffer with him. If we've been baptized, as we say, we've been baptized in his death. And when we come up out of that water, we also what being, being raised in his what? In his glory. Which means that if we've been baptized, in his death, I mean, we got to have some tests. We got to go through some troubles and trials and tribulations. See, we got to go through it. So again, he's testing us. He's carrying us. He's refining us. And Peter is telling them that you're going through this, that you may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, because he's coming, just like he said. Now, the Bible said there are going to be uh, people who are going to deny him, uh, there are going to be people who are going to even war against Jesus Christ. We got, we got people now who, who, are, who are teasing the church, uh, who are speaking against the church. I think I saw something on Facebook the other day, somebody trying to prove uh, that the Apostle Paul was a false uh, a prophet. He's a false teacher. Mm -hmm. All of those things. So we, we can expect all, all of the things that the Bible said would happen is happening right now. And if you can't see that, then he's going to have to really take you through some fire to open up your eyes. I mean, just to see men who marry men 
and calling each other like they would say that this is my husband or two women marrying each other, call that this is my wife. I mean, the Bible predicted that that would be. So everything that's going on now, the Bible has already predicted that it would be so. So the Bible is fulfilling itself. The Bible is what? Coming to pass, the things he told us. But again, we have to stay vigilant. We have to stay in the process and, and stay in that crucible until the Lord gets ready for us. And, and shame on us if we are not prepared to tell people. Now, that doesn't mean we don't love people. That don't mean we don't embrace people's humanity. We just have to do what? We have to tell people the truth in love. We have to tell and, and speak the gospel, preach the gospel, walk in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because all of us, just like we've been washed in the word, everybody that's living outside the will of God, doing things they should be doing, living any kind of way, having an ungodly character, those people too are viable to Jesus Christ. That's why he came and he died for them so that he could take those same people as he's done to us, regardless of how great their sins may be. He wants to take those people and refine them so that they can become more like Jesus Christ, so that everything that's on them, everything that's, that's, that's prohibiting them, whatever lifestyle, whatever spirits, whatever is keeping them from being like the children of God, God wants, through Christ, wants to take them and put them in a crucible that he can burn off all of that stuff, burn off the world, burn off those influences, burn off all of those immoralities, burn off those things that, 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 that are so ungodly that we might come forth like pure gold. This is not about hate. Jesus never hate anybody. But what he did say, unless our righteousness exceed that of the Pharisees, we too will not enter into the kingdom of God. In other words, the Pharisees just really thought, oh, I know the law. I don't have to go along with this other stuff. No, Jesus said, you're gonna have to go through a process. You're gonna have to go through a refiner's fire. I am the refiner. I come, I come to fulfill the law. But even though I'm fulfilling the law, you still need to go through a refiner's fire in order to be purified. So that it's not just about the law, it's about the relationship you wanna have with me. All right. So the Pharisees knew the law, but they didn't want to have no relationship with Jesus Christ. In fact, they really didn't want to have no relationship with God. They were just quoting scriptures and making themselves uh, look important before the people, just like people are doing today. All right. So, again, Peter is telling the people that even though you're being grieved by various trials, and I don't know what all those trials were, but I know that they were trials of sorrow. Uh, trials of struggles, uh, 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 you name it, sickness, whatever they had to go through. He said that this is part of the process that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Let's move on. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, uh, uh, this is by Reverend Bale. All right. Good afternoon. I'm going to read the question first. Think about how God refines us by patching the holes in our lives. How can you relate God's refinement from the story? Let's take a listen. A man was asked to paint a boat. He brought his paint and brushes and began to paint the boat a bright red as the owner had asked him. While painting, he noticed a small hole in the hull and quietly repaired it. When he finished painting, he received his money and left. The next day, the owner of the boat came to the painter and presented him with a nice check, much higher than the payment for painting. The painter was surprised and said, you've already paid me for the painting the boat, sir. But this is not for the paint job. It's for repairing the hole in the boat. Ah, but it was such a small service. Certainly it's not worth paying me such a high amount for something so insignificant. My dear friend, you do not understand. Let me tell you what happened. When I asked you to paint the boat, I forgot to mention the hole. When the boat dried, my kids took the boat 
and went on a fishing trip. They did not know there was a hole. I was not at home at the time. When I returned and noticed they had taken the boat, I was desperate because I remembered that the boat had a hole. Imagine my relief and joy when I saw them returning from fishing. Then I examined the boat and found that you had repaired the hole. You see now what you did? You saved the life of my children. I do not have enough money to pay for your small good deed. So think about how God refines us by patching the holes in our lives. How can you relate God's refinement from the story? Beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. All right, church. Think about how God refines us by patching the holes in our lives. And how can you relate God's, relate God's refinement from the story? Mm. That was outstanding. Well, one thing I wrote down is as you're on the job, there are other tasks not previously known will arise and they must be and should be completed. So not only as we're on, we're in the kingdom and we're on the job, there are things that's going to come up that we've got to do and it's going to take the Holy Spirit, it's going to take God doing it in us. And also as we're on the job, it's going to reveal some, some things that's lacking in us that yes. God has to provide. Yes, yes, absolutely beautiful. Well, church, that's what God wants to do for us. He wants to refine us. He wants to cover those holes up in our lives mm -hmm. because somebody may be riding on the boat of your life. Yes. Somebody may be riding on your words, your influence. Mm -hmm. Somebody gonna be riding and may not even know Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And you can what? You can ride them on into the kingdom. But if you got a hole in your life, not only you, but everybody in the boat gonna sink. Yes. And this is why it is so important, it is so mandatory mm -hmm. that we fill up those holes, a little kindness, mm -hmm. that's filling up the hole. Forgiveness is filling up the hole. All of the things that we think are so insignificant, just like my wife told me today, she said, honey, you look so discouraged. I said, yes, uh, I, I, I have entered a brief moment of discouragement when I look at our nation, when I look at my people, when I look at my race, when I look at the killings in Buffalo, New York, yes. it's almost like a repeat. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like we don't get it. Now uh, uh, the mass shooters are getting younger and younger. Yes. What are we not doing? What can we do better? Mm -hmm. Y'all see what I'm talking about? There are holes, mm. there are holes in the church, there are holes in the community, there are holes in the nation, in the nation. Yes. and young people are sinking. Yes. The church is sinking, lives are sinking, mm -hmm. and we're taking people with us mm. in the sinking process. And, 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 and the question is, how can we fill those holes? Mm. One little kind gesture, just, just to be able to, to, to Help an old lady across the street, a busy street, to get her across. That's a hole being filled because she could have been killed. So don't, don't, don't discount the small things in life. Mm -hmm. You know, don't discount. A lot of times we want to be just like Naaman. We we want to be do something great. We want to do something great because we want to be recognized for it. We we want to be praised for it. But it's the small things. It's the small things like filling the holes, like what Reverend Bell read in this, the small things yes. that really add up to saving somebody's life. Mm -hmm. Amen, amen. We're going to end it there tonight. We hope that you have heard something to encourage your heart. I know I have heard something to encourage my heart. And sometimes you can preach yourself. And you know, David says sometimes you got to learn how to encourage yourself. Mm -hmm. So I've been encouraged tonight. Just through that little story that Reverend Bell has read, mm -hmm. I've been encouraged. Thank you, Reverend Bell. Amen. Thank you. Thank, and thank you all. Let us pray. Thank Father you. God, we come at this hour to thank you for your grace and your mercy. Yes. Father, we ask that you continue to carry us through, Lord, this refining process. Continue to be with us. Continue to watch over us. Continue to form and shape us. Lord, put us in that crucible 
where you have put the Holy Spirit under us. Mm -hmm. And Father, keep us there long enough for that Holy Spirit fire to get in us. And then Father, when that Holy Spirit fire is in us, then shape us and mold us. We are the potter and, 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 and we are the, the, the clay and you are the potter. Yes. And Father, we ask that you just mold us and shape us yes. into vessels pleasing in your sight. Yes. Father, we just want to thank you tonight thank for you. Brother Nat Brown. Lord, he went through his surgery successfully. Yes. And we pray, Father, that you will continue to heal him. Yes. Continue, Father, to lift him up. Mm. We just give you praise right now, yes. Lord, that you have brought him through this process and he has come through successfully. He said he felt no pain mm. and Father, he feels a little soreness, which to be expected, yes. but he knows, Father, that you brought him through and we just wanna thank you for thank that. You. But Father, you. while we are praising you for him, we are also praising you for others that we know that you're touching yes. and others that we know you're bringing through, Lord, the refining process. Thank Lord, you. we're continuing to pray for brother John Griffith. Yes. Father, continue to pray for Sister Earlene and Eddie Robinson. Mm -hmm. Lord, we continue to pray for Brother Walt Mary in the loss of a loved one. Yes. Don't forget Sister Georgiana Neal and Mason Poland. Yes. Father, remember Chaplain Howard. He also needs a miracle. Yes. Lord, we know when you get through with him, he too going to come forth like gold. Mm -hmm. Remember Sister Barbara Harris and family in the loss of a loved one. Yeah. Remember Sister Sheila Smalls and family in the loss of a loved one. Mm -hmm. Remember Sister Jean Kearney in the loss of her brother. Yes. Lord, don't forget Minister Willie Mae Howard mm -hmm. and the loss of her loved one. Yes. Lord, continue, Lord, to remember and touch and bring through the refining process all of the sick, all of the shut-in, all of the caretakers at First Baptist Church and Lord, not only First Baptist, but all churches in the body of Christ. We want to thank you, thank you for how good you've been to us. Mm -hmm. And we submit to your will. Yes. We submit, Lord, to the refining process. Yes, sir. Because we know as long as we submit and you're with us, we know, Lord, at the end of that process, we're going to be what you would have us to be. At this time now, we're going to call the names of all of those persons I may not have mentioned. We want to lift them up right now so that they can be uh, uh, mentioned because you know who they are and you know what they stand in need of. Let's call their names now. I am Harrison Hagen White. Larry Johnson. Williams. Families of the people killed in Buffalo. Uh, I have Sister Ruth Wilson. Julius Williams, mm -hmm. Calvin Williams. Oh, uh, Sir Mike, Michael Mitchell. Mm -hmm. Jane and Richard Hunter. Those who are the last of the homeless. Yeah. The last of the homeless. 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 The last of the Lift up Barbara, lift up Mary, blessing Brother Ty Alexander and the passing of his mother. Thanks for the Mom, the last students to SOS tomorrow. Test. I am. You have heard all of the names that have been listed. You have heard, Father, uh, concerns. Diane Harrison. And we pray, Father, that you will Yes, help me, Lord. Help me. I'm in the battlefield. I feel it every day. We know all power is in your hands. And we pray that you would keep us. We pray that you would guide us. And we pray, Father, that your spirit will rest upon us. And Father, that that spirit, that Holy Spirit, that refining spirit, yes, that spirit of fire will get in us, Thank you. that you might shape us and mold us into vessels 
pleasing in your sight. Mm -hmm. These and all blessings we ask in our son Jesus' name and the people of God said, amen. amen.